you guys uh i've been trying for a while to make this update video it just hasn't worked out i don't have my selfie stick it was in the car when we crashed because i was recording our day out and stuff so uh i'm just trying to balance everything and it's really hard because i've got nothing really to balance on so let's cross our fingers and hope that this works out really decently and decently enough that I can finally upload this. Um, I got out of the hospital a few days ago. I've been out for a couple of days. I, I think I was in there two or three days. I'm not really sure. Uh, I've lost all track of time. I know that, uh, they gave me two units of blood and my hemoglobin did not lower, which means that my internal bleeding had stopped, which is good. And that's why they deemed it safe to release me. Otherwise, they would have had to have surgery. Um, when I breathe in and out, usually you can hear a cracking or like a thump, like a heartbeat. And that's my rib flipping back and forth. Um, I can feel each rib here my my collarbone and you know i can feel the ribs here i can't hear it's it's all mush and this is where my broken rib is I, I mean i don't push down hard but there's definitely a lot of swelling there swelling going all the way up to my neck um i'm tender all the way up here and i've got this weird swelling on the top of my stomach if you know what my body looks like it's where my bat is not down lower where my goat head is so up where my bat is there's these weird bulges coming out of my stomach and on my back where the my kidney injury and my liver injury is my back is bulging out like that as well um my lower back and that's kind of scary i also think something happened to my hand because um like my hands weren't x-rayed or anything but if I touch right here, this spot right here, I run numb all the way down my fingers and all the way down my hand. I can barely make a fist. I, I've got no strength in this hand. It hurts. I can feel it every time I move it just a little bit. It, I, I just go numb. So when I go in for my checkup and my x-ray, um, I'm going to ask them to have a look at my hand as well because that really fucking hurts. There's definitely something wrong with it. Um... So Josh and I had made this video together, but like I said, like I, without a selfie stick, it's just hard. I don't really have any usable footage, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to release that one. So I'll just talk about what we talked about. Um, the crash, the crash was not the other couple's fault. I'm not at liberty to talk about it. Uh, Josh doesn't really want me talking about it, so I'm not going to, to respect his wishes, but I can say that it was a mechanical, mechanical failure with the car. Um, we were not able to stop, um, and all that's getting looked into you at the moment, but I only say this because people keep saying, sue those motherfuckers, you know, oh, they're at fault of oh, those fucking bastards that don't know how to drive. It wasn't them. It wasn't their fault. It was nobody's fault. It was neither of our faults. But um, definitely, we're not looking into suing anybody or anything like that, especially when we could have come so close to losing our lives. Money and suing, that's stupid to focus on that. It really is. Um, we more want to focus on the fact that we're alive and it could have been so much worse. You know, um, I... I've made this video so many times and not released it. I don't really know what I've talked about and what I haven't. Um, I know I still have nightmares about the crash. Like, it's the, the moment before impact. You know, I see the lights coming towards us. And I said, Josh said that I had said, Oh my God, Josh. And I thought I just said, Josh. I didn't even know I said the, the first part. And uh, I thought in my head, we're going to hit. And... I just heard a slam and breaking glass and an alarm going and everything went black. And then I was in the car. My glasses had flown off because my head smashed into the windshield. My glasses flew off. The headband I was wearing flew off. And Josh jumped out of the car. I thought that he just ran off and left me. But it turns out he had run around to the passenger side door because he tried to open the door and get me out. 
I had no idea he even did that. I, I was like, he fucking just left me. And he told me, no, he was trying to get me out. And when he couldn't, he ran back around and he was trying to pull me out of the car. And there was some lady saying, stay, stay. But like, I remember my whole chest closed up and I couldn't breathe. It was just a cage of agony in my, my whole torso. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die in here. I need to get out of the car. I need to get out of the car. And I was stuck. My my dress was caught between the door and, and the seat because my, my side got hit and I crumbled or whatever. And um, I was tugging at myself like, like a fucking rat in a trap. And I just, I didn't even care at the moment. And I pulled and pulled. My strap broke. My dress tore at the bottom. And I'm thinking, oh, I can still salvage it until they cut it off me at the hospital, which sucks. I was like, no, I'm cut my dress off. And they did. And, I can't find another one. Well, I found one, but it's like fucking 100 150 fucking dollars and um there's no way I can ever replace it. It was like from 2003, so I'm really sad about that. And um I also lost my necklace, the one with this design on it. I that I wear all the time. I never take that off. That necklace is gone too. Losses piercing under here. I took that off when I got home because I lost two of the balls. So I was like, oh, fuck it. Um, all in all, I still got lucky, but still. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, so I ripped myself free. He pulled me out of the car and I stood up and I couldn't, I couldn't stand all the way. I was hunched over and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't catch my breath. And I just remember like, oh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I, I couldn't see anything. And they laid me down in the grass and I curled up in a ball. They covered me with my hoodie um, cause I, I don't think I was wearing, obviously I wasn't wearing it. And, um, I was like going into shock my whole body was shaking. Like I was being electrocuted. And I, I just kept asking Josh, you know, can you get my glasses? Can you get my glasses? And I was trying to focus on something familiar. And just the only thing I could focus on was just, I need my glasses. I need my glasses, I need my glasses. And I actually didn't get them back until, um, the day I left the hospital, he found them. They were munched up they're thrown in the corner between the driver's seat and the door and miraculously they didn't get broken there's a couple of scratches on the lenses and uh, chips but nothing really noticeable once you get used to it I, I was so lucky with that I was so lucky that I didn't lose an eye or that I didn't cut up the side of my face or anything else or break my legs or or anything like that considering I smashed my face into the side windshield and the windshield shattered all around me. I had a couple of glass cuts in my hands, but I mean, nothing really. I didn't even get that and there was glass everywhere. Josh got glass cuts and then he has some some cuts here in his arm, um, bruising and stuff. I really, for the most part, don't have bruising. I have some bruising on my boob here for some reason. And on my hip, where I guess the seatbelt was, I've got cuts on my legs that I think my boots saved me from because I was wearing my big ass boots, which before I got pulled out of the car, I ripped them off me because obviously I, I would have fallen over. I couldn't walk or run in those. And um, yeah, just I laid down on the ground outside and kind of faded in and out. Didn't really know what the fuck was going on. Just hyperventilating really ish because I couldn't even take in a breath the EMTs came and they put me on a backboard which hurt so bad and then they put me in a neck brace I've got a lovely photo <laughs> and um got to the hospital they cut my dress off me they took me in for a cat scan and um x-rays and I just kept asking where's Josh where's Josh where's Josh this is my fiance here's my fiance here and finally they got him let him come in and I was like I can die now because <laughs> I thought I was gonna die I was like I've probably got internal bleeding something something's got to be wrong with me the way that I'm hurting I mean I knew it was a bad crash and I just knew I was gonna die and um then I knew I was having a panic attack so I was like no calm down you probably just got shook around you're not gonna die you're gonna be fine you know you just got shook around from the wreck they're gonna come back and they're gonna tell you everything's fine and the doctor came in and he's like well got the results of your scans back and you've got some pretty serious injuries and I was like 
oh my god this can't be happening to me like because i've never been in a crash before i've never been seriously hurt before you know i mean i know that it's probably a lot of people out there that haven't but i i haven't and um i'm still like a little kid in a lot of ways i don't handle bad news very very well and he was like first thing he said was that my rib was broken <coughs> oh <coughs> oh uh, <coughs> Uh, so he said my rib was broken and then he said um you've got contusions on your kidneys uh we see some bruising on your brain and um you you're bleeding from your liver you've got a cut about that big and i was like i just went like this and i just started crying i was like oh my god my body like oh my god i'm not gonna make it out of here oh my god you know and josh said oh my god and he just kind of buried his head in his hands and and then the doctor left and then the other doctor came in and said you know you have to go up to icu we need to monitor you and if your hemoglobin lowers then you're still bleeding internally and we, we might have to do surgery we need to do more x-rays in the morning and see if your rib is moved and blah 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 and i was like oh my god I don't get to go home. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm like, oh my God. And they had originally said that Josh couldn't stay, that he wasn't allowed to be in ICU because it's ICU, you know. And But when we went up there, the guy was like, oh, you're staying the night? Okay, well, you know, here's your chair. Here's a blanket and a pillow. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? And they gave him dinner and a drink. Like, they were so nice there. Like, that was the nicest hospital I've ever been in, both in the way it looks and the way that they treat you. Like, Considering it, especially it's the only hospital in Greenwood, you'd think they could slack it a little bit, but no, they're really good. Like, I, I fucking love the hospital. Um, but we went up there and they took my blood the next morning and my hemoglobin had lowered a whole unit, which meant I was still bleeding. And so that's why they gave me the two units and stuff. And, um, yeah, I just been in agony. They gave me shots of... I'm pretty sure it was Demerol. Um, and I'm on Oxycontin, uh, something like that. They wanted me to take the pills in the hospital, and I didn't want to take the pills because I, I liked the shot because I knew it wasn't giving me any side effects. They just gave me the shot. I got warm all over, and then instantly, like, passed out. And um, they were like, we want to send you home with pills, so we need to know how you are with the pills and I was like oh fine and then they gave me the pills and I was like nah, woo. <laughs> and it doesn't make me feel high but it makes me feel really sleepy like a sleeping pill and no pain it was like the accident never happened I was like woo, yeah and you know felt really good and when Josh picked me up to go home I made sure I was on some pills if I could take the pills the ride home didn't hurt got home and everything was fine and um I roll around and it hurts it feels like this crushing weight on my chest still like I can't move I can hardly breathe sometimes I can't roll over I could hear my bones creaking and cracking um I don't have many pills I've only got like four days worth left so and that's um eight pills because I just take two at a time and um, I'm only taking them once a day not twice like I was originally and uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do when I'm done with that although Josh did buy me some z -Quil, which is like NyQuil's version of sleeping pills but it's in a liquid form is what he got for me and so once all this medication's out of my system I'm going to start taking that to try to help me sleep at night and sleep through the pain hopefully um and then I got to go in for an x-ray to check on everything. Um, thank you guys for all your your kind thoughts and your well wishes and all that. Except for the motherfucker who wrote saying they wish I had died. Which I expected that. I was waiting for it. So it's not really a big deal. I, I got, me and Josh got so much more love and support and prayers and well wishes that that didn't even, wasn't even blip on my radar. It's just like whatever. I'm not going to fucking die. I'll fucking live just to spite you fuckers, you know, at this point. But um, 
we know how lucky we were. We really, really were. Um, whether we're fucked or not, in a lot of pain or not, it could have been so much worse. I could have died, he could have died, we both could have died, or we could have ended up disfigured or with far more injuries than we actually have, or the other couple could have died. So really, we we are very, very, very lucky. We know how lucky we are. And um, just, I'm so scared to get in a car again. I don't even know how I'm going to do it. On the ride home, I was freaking out, like, like, be careful, be careful, be careful. And every time a car came, I'm like, God, and I'm thinking, if we crash, my poor body won't be able to take it. I know everything's going to just fucking rupture. I've got no stability right now. I can't hold myself straight. I've got no defenses against another fucking crash right now before I'm healed. That's it for me. Like, please don't crash. Please don't crash. And, and... I've got to, you know, I've got to go to this appointment and I've got to go do some other things and stuff, other appointments. And I don't know how the fuck I'm going to do any of that. I don't know how Josh was able to just up and go and work again. I mean, and his job is driving, so he has to drive all the time. And I'm so scared for him every day he's out there, like something's going to happen to him or he's going to crash or something. But he seems, he's just so much more adaptive than I am. You know, I'm adaptive, but in certain ways, I'm really not. And um, he feels so bad because he was the one driving. He's been spoiling the living fuck out of me. Like, he's bought me beef jerky, and I'm craving all kinds of shit. So, like, I was craving nutty bars, and I was craving fiddle faddle. And so he bought me four boxes of nutty bars and three boxes of fiddle faddle. And I was like, I kind of only wanted one. <laughs> and, um... If I can been offering food, I'm like, God, oh, enough for the food. Because I actually can't really eat. Um, I take a bite here, a bite there, and I feel like throwing up. Oh, I've got no appetite whatsoever for anything. I, I'm craving shit, but I don't have the ability to eat or drink what I'm craving. So it's making life really hard for me right now. And um, I don't know. Just He's been real fucking sweet. Real sweet to me. I'm still hoping that he can go buy the car and get the rest of the stuff out of it and get some pictures of the of the damage to my side. And if he does, then I'll include it. If not, then I'm going to probably have to just upload the video without it. I've got another video coming. Uh, I'll upload it after this. And it was our day out before the crash. We were having like the best day ever. We were so in love and we were so happy. It was just... The most wonderful day. I mean, it was nothing extreme. It was just one of those days that was just, it just felt really good, you know? Like, we drove into town and, you know, we went shopping. We were buying Christmas stuff and we went to Chili's to eat and had an amazing meal. All the food was great. The service was great. I had this delicious black cherry lemonade drink it was like wow and then um we went to walmart and he got me this bear that i have my my camera balanced on and it's got the year on the foot and doctor who shirt and ursula um funko plush and then i made a video of that stuff in the car and then we headed off and then we decided to stop he wanted to buy us milkshakes from cookout and so we went and we got milkshakes. He got a Snickers one or a Butterfinger one and I got a, a banana one. And um, we crashed right after that. And it just goes to show you how in the blink of an eye your whole life can change. Anything can happen any second of any day. And you won't be aware of it. You might think if I'm ever in an accident or a situation like that, I'm going to act like this or this or that. But I tell you what, when it actually happens, you don't remember any of that. It happens so fast. I always told myself if I saw a crash coming, I'd reach out to the person I'm with, be like, I love you. Or, you know, look, look out for them and hold them and touch them. And it wasn't even like that. Like, I don't even know. Like, he could have been dead next to me and I wouldn't have even known it. It was just, you know, we're here. I'm seeing the car and I'm like, oh shit, Josh, at the same time fuck we're gonna crash and then bam we crash and then that was it that was all i knew there was no time for i love you be safe you know 
remember me or any of that stuff is just you just lose everything and that could have been it for us we could have lost each other he could have been in jail i mean we weren't drinking there's no alcohol no drugs nothing like that so there's no danger of any of that but um we could have just i don't know we could have lost a lot more than we did and um well, the whole situation fucking sucks and I'm going to be in pain for a very long time. It could have been worse. And we're very thankful that we still have our lives, our health for the most part and each other. And, um, we know he definitely don't take each other for granted. Don't, don't take any moment of your life for granted because it could be over like, you know, like that. And, you won't see it coming. You won't be able to react to it. You won't be able to change it. And um, it just kind of puts puts a lot of things in perspective. And everything feels different now. Like, I know, like, I'm home and what's done is done. And I should be able to hop up and just go on with my life. But I can hardly move. So I can't, like, clean the house. You know, I can't, like, scrub because I've got my pain over here. And I've got whatever's wrong with my hand over here. And then you know over here my fucking kidneys and shit and then my side like my hip hurts so much probably I would have slammed into the door or something but when I lay on my side it feels like I'm laying on a ball and it's just a ball of bruise is what it is and I keep forgetting that our bed is an air mattress and I keep thinking to myself fuck the springs are really coming out on this mattress this is a real shit mattress but it's not there are no springs it's just, I'm just bruised all over and Josh understands he doesn't expect me to clean up or anything. And so I'm like looking around feeling like a fucking failure because I haven't cleaned the house. I haven't cooked dinner. I haven't done dishes. I haven't really done anything. I can barely even take my own shirt off. You know, like I had to have him undress me last night because I couldn't lift, I can't lift my arms to take my shirt off. And, um, not that he minded, but, but I mind, I mind not being self-sufficient even checking the mail, he's like, don't check the mail because if the dogs jump up on you and knock you over, you're not going to be able to get back up again. And I know that that's true as well. A lot of times I can't even get up from sitting down. I need his help to even get out of the bed. I need his help to roll over. When I was in the hospital and he was asleep on the, on the chair by the door, I couldn't even roll over without help. Like I, I was moaning and crying even on medication and he had to come and like pull the blanket from under me and gently try to kind of push me over because I've got my, my tailbone started to hurt. My back was hurting. My side was hurting. My ribs were hurting. And then like my organs on my other side were hurting. Like there's no easy way for me to lay, no safe spot, no painless area. And it's like that just less now. I'm still in pain every part of my body. And, um, Never thought I'd be so dependent on pills, but I'm fucking freaking out that I'm almost out of pills. I feel nauseous all the time. I feel nauseous, but craving, craving all kinds of stuff <laughs> all of the time. And, um, that's just kind of making this fucking with my head a little bit, I guess. Been real cranky, real moody. He just wants me to lay down and sleep and I'm being stubborn. I'm like, I don't want to sleep. I don't want to sleep. I just, I want to do something. I feel real shit. I feel useless. And I don't know. Um, there's been about two or three people that have, uh, there's been about two people that have offered, um, stuff for Christmas. One person sent a little bit of money to help because now, um, of course, Josh got a big fine for the accident that we weren't prepared for. And, um, and this other person just wanted to be really nice as so she bought me something from my Amazon wish list, And, uh, I just wrapped up the whole Amazon box. So I brought it under the tree. And so for Christmas, we'll unwrap that. And, um, that was really sweet of both of them. They didn't, you guys didn't have to do that at all. And it was, it, it was really, really nice. It made me smile. And uh, I just want to say thank you for that. And um, a couple people have asked, but it never went further than that. So if you're asking again, we do not have a PO box, probably will not. But 
not too far from where Josh used to live, his cousin lives. He's got family all over. And they say they live in a very private area. And they've given permission for us to use their address. And so I've got an address where I'm getting stuff and he's getting stuff um, from YouTube and viewers and subscribers, things like that. Our own mail, of course, goes to our own house. But the mailbox is close to the road where anybody could walk by and get it. So we have to have it. We feel more comfortable with it being sent somewhere else. So that's why it's sent to their house. And... um that's where Amazon is linked to and stuff. And so um, on my about page, I've got my Amazon wish list there, PayPal email address and all, all that information's there and in my, my descriptions or whatnot. So you don't have to ask or offer and then say, oh shit, I can't do it. That's fine if you can't do it. I don't expect anything i i said this i say this every time i don't expect it but we always appreciate it and if you do send something that shit's going to be wrapped up and fucking um unwrapped on christmas on on video so <laughs> tell me if you don't want that to happen but um aside from that thank you guys for your support and your comments and your concerns and um really really appreciate it didn't expect so many people to care I was just really scared and wanted to make an update. Like, I always get scared and want to make updates for certain things like that. Like, when I had my ectopic and stuff, just in case I die, <laughs> I want to document the last thing before I die. I'm kind of like that. So, um, forgive me for that and stuff. And I'm still not really up to talking too much because typing fucking hurts. Because I'm a, I'm a two-finger typer and I'm just like, do-do-do-do-do and trying to do that on my rib really fucking hurts and so I'm sorry I'm still not trying to be rude oh look at my hair <laughs> threw in a wig very sloppily didn't even really put it on right because like when I had my gastric sleeve surgery and my hair fell out after I guess the damage whatever's been done to my body my hair's falling out again and it's looking really shitty and so I just I couldn't get it to look decent enough on camera so I just kind of half-assed through something on my head just for the video so I'm really uncomfortable not feeling very pretty or even human at the moment um but anyway enough about me this has run really long but it was an important update I'm really sorry thank you guys for watching for being here and I will see you guys hopefully hopefully soon hopefully feel much better. <laughs> Take care. So talk, how are you doing? I'm fine. Talk S about... Still sore. Uh, I had a... My arm was bruised up. Yeah. And that's because I probably have a few scars right there. Yeah. It was going away, but I'm fine. I'm better than she is. Well, I'm you're still working. Home. Yeah, yeah. So sore and all that. Yeah, it's I just get enough sleep. I know I look tired. I am tired. It's just not the thing to think about at the moment. Suing and things like that. You gotta be happy for what you have and not worry about who you can take down with you. And I felt like a big baby for thinking about it, but I still have I have nightmares about it. I didn't say that she. She never called like me a big, big baby. baby. I felt like way. a big baby. <laughs> No, he wouldn't talk to me like that. Um, I feel like a big baby because I feel like well, since I'm alive, then I should just be hopping up and over it and, you know, and all that. And uh, because I don't bruise and I don't show any outward signs of what I'm feeling, it looks like I'm fine, but I'm really not. Oh. Like, he'll tell you, like, I don't have any fucking bruises on me, really. There's like nothing. I've got a fucking broken rib. I should have bruising. There's no bruising. There's no sign of anything on me. Well, that's so sweet. Yeah. So there's been a lot of people that have said, um, well wishes, get well, get, get better, and hope you're okay, and things like that. So um, do you have anything to say to everybody? Thank you for the kind words. Uh, <laughs> We're fine. We're alive. She's she's getting better. So 
Yeah, better every day. Just yeah. still in pain, but it is noticeably better every day. And hopefully soon it'll be all gone and I'm like all swollen all up here. Like I can feel swelling up here for some reason. It hurts like all right here, down here, that my fucking hand, my side, my back, and my hip. And if I try to lift my arm, anything that pulls on this here, all, all really hurts. But I can move. And we're alive, and that's what's important. So, yeah, that was just our little update. Yeah. We're never going to take each other for granted, though. Yeah. Or life. Yeah, really. It makes you realize how quickly life can end. Yeah. And how everything can change. You, you could be having, like, the most amazing day of your life, which we were having, like, an amazing day. Yeah. And then just in like the blink of an eye, everything could just change and yeah. we could have lost each other or lost one of us. And, yeah. and then like, you just, yeah, it, it it's like, uh, kind of puts things into perspective, yeah, I guess, how quickly you could lose everything. Yeah. Be thankful for what you have when you have it. For sure. Say bye. Ha, <laughs>